Hello, I'm the High Heel Knight, and welcome to my quick discussion about the second Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice trailer. Uh, now, this is not a usual reaction video. I watched it early this morning in the, around 12.30 uh, a.m., and uh, I don't have the software to show me watching the trailer as it plays, so I apologize for that. Uh, but basically, I just wanted to talk quickly about the trailer. Now, I am looking forward to this movie, but I am disappointed by this trailer because it pretty much shows the entire film practically beginning, middle, end. It shows how Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent meet. It shows how Lex Luthor meets those two characters. It uh, confirms that Lex Luthor uh, is responsible for creating Doomsday via uh, General Zod, which uh, many of us theorized, but now it's confirmed. Uh, we knew that Wonder Woman would be in the movie, but now we know that not only is she in the movie, but she's going to be part of the climactic battle, and that has to be a climax. I mean, you can't do anything after Doomsday. You don't do Doomsday mid-movie. mid, mid -movie. Uh, But another problem with that is uh, it also shows how uh, Batman and Superman are going to have their put your differences aside uh, for the greater good uh, issue. I mean, with Batman versus Superman, we know they're not going to actually kill each other, especially since we've got a whole movie universe to build up. But at the same time, uh, even though we, we know what is going to happen, as in eventually they'll get together, uh, we don't know how. I mean, we could have even had them still enemies by the end of this movie, uh, and then later on when the Justice League fully forms, uh, that's when they uh, put aside their differences. But no, we pretty much have the greater good put aside our differences moment, and we know that uh, Wonder Woman is responsible for that moment. She's kind of like uh, Captain America in the first Avengers movie where she, uh, where, she where uh, he interrupts uh, Thor and Iron Man. And in fact, uh, Wonder Woman has a shield like it. So she pretty much is just doing what Captain America did and telling these guys to sort of knock it off. You've got a really, really big problem uh, right here. Uh, so unless that shot of the three heroes is the very end of the movie, uh, sort of like how in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 uh, was hoping for a great fight with Rhino. Many of us thought that was going to be a great fight with Rhino. And it turns out that's the last shot of the movie of uh, Spider-Man about to uh, fight Rhino. Uh, if the shot of the three heroes getting ready to fight Doomsday is not the last shot, like they actually fight Doomsday and defeat Doomsday, then where do you go from that? You know, wh wh where do you go as far as the cinematic universe from uh, Doomsday to, I guess, eventually Darkseid. I mean, the next movie is The Suicide Squad, and as interesting as Squad we're going to be for having villains and, and their, their version of the Joker, you know, you can't really uh, top Doomsday as far as, uh, like, you know, the Wonder Woman movie, then the Aquaman movie, then the Green Lantern movie, then the Psy uh, movie, and then the, eventually the Justice League movie. It's like, you, you, how do you uh, cushion between Doomsday and uh, everything else has to come until eventually dark side or whatever. So that's uh, a concern that I have. That's a concern that a lot of us uh, now have as far as fans. And it just wasn't necessary. Um, not only necessary narratively speaking, I mean, this is Batman versus Superman. Okay, and sure, DC wants to quickly establish its universe to catch up with Marvel, but it's really unnecessary. I mean, it's Batman versus Superman. You could have Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent in a chess match for 70 minutes. And I do mean Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent, not Superman and Batman. They never get a costume. You know, uh, there's like some crazy charity event contest and Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent managed to get into the finals of that uh, charity uh, um, chess match. And that's the whole movie. And it would still make money, okay? So this whole, ooh, Wonder Woman's in it. Oh, Tuesday's in it. Oh, Lex is in it. Oh, this is and that and that and that. And plus, it's just another thing. And as far as this trailer goes, this movie is still like half a year away. So what new stuff are you really going to wow us with other than shots of the other heroes? Okay, uh, the Star Wars trailers, they were all great trailers, mysterious, showed a lot of footage. But still, we don't really know what the story is. We don't know how Luke's going to play with it. I mean, there's all types of theories, but we don't know. We certainly don't know how the movie is going to end. We just don't know uh, how characters are going to meet. We don't know what circumstances are going to call upon it. We don't know what particular threats are going to happen. Uh, we don't know a lot of things other than the, basically the images and the music. 
So that's the way a trailer should work. We show you enough to get you interested, especially with a franchise that we're pretty much familiar with, uh, and it's going to make money anyway. You know, Star Wars is going to make money no matter what you put on the screen. Uh, so, you know, just, just give us enough. Even, But really what this is is just a trailer war with the studios, making sure that everybody starts talking about their trailer so they just toss out whatever they want. And, like, uh, a lot of people complained about the uh, Terminator Genesis trailer. They felt that showing off that John Connor was the a Terminator uh, messed up the movie with major plot point. But I sort of forgive it because with the uh, Terminators, it was always about what's the new Terminator, okay? The first movie, okay, it's a killer cyborg from outer space. Second movie, it's two uh, robots from outer space. One is the good guy, the other one is the villain. And the villain, he can sh uh, shapeshift into other people and use stabbing weapons. Third movie, it's another uh, shape-shifting cyborg, except this one uses a female form, and she can control other machines, including the good guy cyborg that's here. So when it comes to the fourth movie, people are like, oh no, you uh, the trailer ruins the fact that uh, the human is now is a cyborg. But that's just following the trend of the, tra uh, the trailers. Everyone expects some, some type of new Terminator, some type of new uh, assassin. So that trailer just shows, okay, here's the new Terminator type. It's a human that's now a cyborg. So when uh, Genesis comes along, yeah, from a narrative perspective, it's bad to show that John Connor is the new Terminator, but uh, it's just the trend of that movie series, okay? Here's one Terminator, here's another Terminator, here's another Terminator, okay? Fifth movie, here's a new Terminator, and it's bump, 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 the person you last expect. It's a, it's a creature that can mimic others, that can shape shift, that's very powerful, and of all people, it's John Connor. So that's why that gets spoiled in those trailers. But in here, there's no need to, to do all that extra wow. In fact, just the fact that you have a trailer is up. Uh, so, but anyway, last week, the uh, Captain America Civil War trailer came out, or a couple of days ago, Superman, uh, uh, excuse me, the Civil War trailer came out. And now this is just a studio saying, okay, we not only got to release a trailer, but we want to wow it. We want to want up it. And it's this trailer war with all these various studios, not just trying to show a good trailer, but just wow it and go higher. Oh, you put out a trailer? No, I'm going to put out a trailer. You put out a trailer. And it's just unnecessary. We're going to talk about it. The fans are going to talk about it, hopefully favorably, but we're going to talk about whatever trailer you put out. So trying to get this whole wowing war of trailers is just ridiculous. And when it comes to comic books and things like that, fanboys are going to war anyway. So why give us actually a legitimate reason to get upset about your trailer? Uh, you know, do, do enough to get us enticed and interested, but don't blow it a lot, especially since the movie only come, still has to come out uh, half a year later, and you pretty much give away the whole movie, how they meet, uh, the conflict, uh, the basically the resolution of, how, of why they stop fighting, and uh, the big giant threat of the movie, and things like that. I mean, what are you going to do for the next six months other than show shots of the other heroes that are in the movie? Okay, so that's my... Uh, Quick little rant about uh, the Batman versus Superman uh, Dawn of Justice second full uh, length trailer. Uh, like I said, I am looking forward to seeing the movie. I am going to see the movie. I'm going to see the Captain America movie. I'm not uh, trying to say one movie is going to be better or worse than the other. I'm just uh, commenting on the trailer itself. I felt that it showed too much and that it was unnecessary to show so much. Pretty much unnecessary to have all this extra stuff in the movie at all. You just have Batman and Superman. That's enough. But still, uh, there's this I'm just sort of tired of this sort of trailer war that's gone on in the past about two or three years uh, where everyone is trying to one-up themselves the trailers so that people like myself uh, and the people on the line will get talking and talking and talking about it. Uh, we're going to talk about whatever you put out on the trailer, so you don't need to show the whole movie. Okay, that's my quick little rant. Thanks for watching my uh, video. I'm High Hill Knight. Please like, subscribe, or dislike and subscribe, or whatever you do. Uh, just make sure give me some type of feedback uh, and remember find inspiration everywhere.